Okay, we're back at the home screen again. I think we left off here at the signal for the wireless. But in the middle, you have the time, just some really handy things like that. And on, at the top right-hand corner is the battery life. And I have 92%. It should last, they say, 10 hours. Yeah. Let's, go to, let's go to Safari, should Speaking we? Speaking of the internet, Safari okay. is Apple's web browser. And notice when you pull that up, how quick that comes up. Of oh. course, that's going to be based on your internet speed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it looks as though it would on your computer. It's, this isn't watered down. You know, this isn't a mobile version of this. This is exactly how it would look on your computer. And notice as Jill's scrolling through it, it scrolls very smooth. It does, very, very smoothly. Right. And now, what if you wanted to zoom in on something? If I really wanted to look at this, if you take mm -hmm. two fingers and zoom in, you can really get large with oh, your, with like your print. I like that. With your font size. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not actually changing your font, you're just zooming in on it. And, and then if I want to go back out. Okay, if I want to go to check, to, if I want to sign up for a workshop at ESU 8, okay, I can click on it. Again, it acts just as it would. So you can just do that and register mm -hmm. for sessions, okay. Sure. Awesome. You can bookmark things just like you would. If I wanted to add a bookmark here, I can add it. Or that reminds me to mention, you can only have one application open on this currently. I've already read where okay. they're hoping in the future to be able to have more than one uh, application running at the same time. Because every time I want to get back to another application now, I have to. You have to go back home. You know, I am going to go back out. If, let's say I wanted a, a picture from, from the internet. Okay? And let's go, let's go back to the issue 8. And let's say I want uh, this picture here. And I want to be able to add it to a document that I'm working on. Okay. So, we so if I click and hold, and I can save that image. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So saved, but where does it put it? It puts it in my photos now. And now all of a sudden, I have this available to me in my photos. But also, like if I'm in Pages or Keynote, I can add that picture. So that's how easy it is to get a picture off the internet. Click on Photos okay. here. Okay. Oh, there it is. Look what I have. <laughs> okay. Isn't that slick? That is really it's just, slick. It's just incredibly, incredibly easy and friendly. Huh. So now, Pages. That doesn't come with the iPod. That's something that you purchased. That's a good point. That's an application that I've purchased. And we'll go out to the App Store next, but Pages is $9.99. Okay. As, as Numbers and Keynote. Mm -hmm. So some of those things that we talked about earlier come with it. And some of the apps some, are free? Some of the apps are free. Some you have to buy. You okay. want to look at the App yeah, Store? Yeah, let's go to the App Store. So there's an App Store. That's obviously one place where you can look and find things. See, there's pages. Oh, the top paid apps. Yeah, and it says it's installed. Free. It even tells you it knows what you have already. But so you can you can search under featured at the bottom. Okay, if you're just browsing. And you can also do this on your computer. You don't have to do it on your iPad, but you can do it on your iPad. See, so you can search. And I really like to look at this, the new and noteworthy. And I also love to look at the top charts. Here's the top paid apps. These are the top free apps. Mm-hmm. So oh, all sorts of all things. All kinds of things here. Yeah, and last I saw online, there are over a thousand already built specifically for an iPad. Now, here, Jill, this is key. I've even done this. A lot of your iPod apps will work with your iPad. Oh, really? But they're, they're smaller. Notice we have this big screen size. Right. But they'll show up on your screen tiny because they're built for the size of the iPod. So mm -hmm. be careful, when, especially when you're online, when you're at your computer looking in the iTunes store, mm -hmm. make sure when you buy or download an app that it's made for the iPad. Yeah. Is that cool? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, Because yes. if you buy the Scrabble version for iPod, it'll show up on your screen small. You need to buy the Scrabble version for the iPod. Had. Okay. So it's it's and, and often, that's an important distinction. Yeah, and Very they're more important. expensive too. The iPad apps are a little okay. bit more expensive. Okay. I just thought this one looked fun. Mm -hmm. Glow coloring. Mm -hmm. Three. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. And they give you little okay. screenshots about it. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. And you can read about it. So Jill, there's one app that we need to show, especially if you're in education, and you're a science teacher, and you're talking about the elements and the periodic table. And that app is called The Elements, and I think it was twelve ninety nine worth every penny. And I found this app on a list of the top iPad um, apps for education. Yeah. So Go ahead I and think click we need to it. show it. Let's just look okay, at it because it's, it. it's amazing. 
and it's called the element. And notice, just and I'll, we'll just look at that in a minute. All those elements on this page right now are actually moving, twirling, twisting, very eye-catching. So if you wanted to touch one of those, pick pick one that you wanted to look at. Okay, uh, let's pick. I like this yellow one. Pick that one. And what is the yellow? Sulfur. One? Sulfur. But notice when it pulls up how clear that is and it's turning and you can actually look at it. I mean, what a different way to talk about sulfur than this. Than just seeing the symbol S on yeah. a periodic table. Or having the teacher have to find it and yes. pull it out. Yes, Okay. Picture a bunch of these iPads in the hands of students. I notice working. there's a lot of information on the side. If I click on, I'm just going to touch yeah. atomic weight and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. So it gives you all sorts of, and they can't see this necessarily, but it gives you all sorts of other information. With the unit conversions, yeah, lots of information. Okay, what else can we do? Um, let's click on the S down here. Okay. I'm going to click on it again. Okay. And there it gives me a whole bunch of information, a narrative about sulfur, plus the way sulfur is used. Other things that you find sulfur, now watch this, look, e even... When I, when I do that, you can, you can do multiple. I mean, think how much fun this is for kids rather than talking about things like sulfur and, and where you can find them. But you can actually look at various things and you can move them and look at them and read about them. And, and of course, we're not even using, I'm going to say back here, we're not even using all these things. This is filled with this sort of, okay, and that gets you back to the home. So you can explore. There, there's a neat song that the guy made, so yes. if you're really learning it, okay, listen to this. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, okay. zirconium. And Jill, you're <laughs> going to be asked to learn that song. And as a former science teacher, I would have had my students learn yes. that song. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. Let's, let's go back home. There is so much to this, and we're running out of time. And we're, going to, we're going to do more of these, I believe, because it's, there's so much to explore on this. One last thing, the music. You, know, you, can, you can, of course, sync all of your music, your podcasts, okay? any audio books that you have, and all those sorts of things. You what, can get, and what I noticed, Corey during that last song that you just played was the, the capability of the speaker yes. in this the is speaker. phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's great. You can also plug in, as we said earlier at the beginning, you can plug earphones in, you know, so you can still have it mm. quiet. But it's an incredible thing. If you want to see one, I, I have a couple here at ESU 8. I can bring them out to your school. You can look at them, experiment with them, but um, I just can't say enough about it. Yeah, it is a big iPod, but it does so much more. Well, what I like about this iPad Touch is that you can create. Mm -hmm. You can create mm -hmm. a keynote, which is a like a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. You can create a Word document, or a, not a Word document, but pages, yeah. like a Word document. Uh -huh. You can word process. Is yes, basically yes. What you're saying. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's incredible. It's worth looking at. With Keynote, just uh -huh. a quick question. Can I hook this to an LCD projector and show it? Yes. Yes, you can with Keynote. And also you can show videos. You can't project currently. You can't project, say, for instance, um, your, the Internet. Like if I wanted to go out right now and, sh and project um, and show you, let's say, uh, Safari. And if I wanted to project this onto a, onto a camera, you can't currently do that. Okay. Okay. But you can within Keynote. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I create mm -hmm. a presentation, mm -hmm. I can hook up an LCD projector and project that onto a wall. And what about movies? Movies, can, I can those do can that be as projected well. Yeah. as well. Yeah. So I suspect that they'll change that. In, you know, I don't know, but I bet they change that in the future, where you can do those sorts hmm. of things. I think that it'll continue to get better. You know, mm -hmm. they'll improve mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and I think it's great the way it is already. So, all right, thanks, Jill. Yeah. Thanks for showing that to me. It's awesome.